Well, with us now is Andrew Lansley, the Conservative MP and leader of the House of Commons. In 2009, David Cameron said that uh, in the matter of MPs' expenses, the key thing was, does it pass the smell test? Do you think Maria Miller does pass the smell test? Well, I think what we've clearly seen, of course, is one of those cases which relates to prior to 2009. Uh, and, I mean, frankly, of course, you know, she was accused of obtaining a financial benefit by having her parents in her home paid for by expenses. And that complaint wasn't upheld. The principal complaints against her weren't upheld. So you think she but does the, pass the smell test? But the important thing about 2009 is that then we legislated for a new and independent system for the scrutiny of MPs' expenses. I'm very and I didn't sorry, see in that package, it's very important. I ask you a very to, simple question. I know. Does this pass the smell test? Yeah, and what I'm saying is, actually, You're there was no dishonesty. And I think it does pass that it because there was no the dishonesty. Test. The complaint against her principally wasn't right. upheld. What was identified yeah. were some overpayments that she has repaid. And the issue, of course, very much a House of Commons issue, was that she hadn't cooperated as fully and as freely as the committee and the commissioner wanted. And she apologised to the House for that. Do you think a 32-second apology was adequate? Well, I think she made the apology that was asked for by the Standards Committee. Mm. But I do want so to come you, back... you do think it was adequate? Yes, I think it, because she made the apology that was asked for. Uh, and uh, if do you look you back, think... actually, there have been other previous apologies that have also been literally yeah. what was asked for, and she made the apology that was asked for. And, of course, the, the apology you make in a personal statement is one which is agreed with the Speaker, and sure. it's not really appropriate. Well, he stopped at making a longer one, well, did he? it wouldn't have been appropriate for her to elaborate. It was right for so her to make the apology when, when that was asked When she says in for. this article for the voters of Basingstoke today that she's devastated by what's happened, what's she devastated about? Well, because... I think she was very unhappy that it turned out she had claimed more than she was entitled to because she didn't think she had and it came out in the course of in inquiries into this uh, that she had claimed more than she uh, really so ought to have she done. Was, so and she's, she was, I she was think, devastated uh, to discover she'd well, done something it's wrong. It's for Maria to say precisely, but I think I know her and I think yeah. she was very devastated because she believed that all the way through this, remember the leg inquiry back in 2009? You know, she, along with others, had been looked into by Sir Thomas Legg, uh, who said there was no problem. She believed she had complied fully. And actually, if you look at the report, the, the Standards Committee took the view that what she had claimed uh, in relation to which was her mm. main home and so on was actually reasonable in the light of the rules at the time. Um, as Leader of the House of Commons, you obviously think the Standards Committee is important. Yes, I do, certainly. Uh, do you think it uh, therefore acceptable that MPs don't bother to turn up for its meetings? No, and I think they should be there and I think they Does need to, the to do their test? job. Well, they need to do their job and uh, they completely understand but, that. And I think it's but true... But they've not been doing it. Well, the three in, in lay case, members in said case, today... Yes. Yes. that very okay. often they were too busy to be concerned about standards. You well, they have, they have delivered yeah. on their responsibilities in a number of cases in recent months. Look, and we have... There are remember, ten MPs this, on that committee. Yeah, At one meeting, only lay members, one MP turned up. And we have put That's lay members on this committee. No, it's not. And I'm not, right. I'm not saying it is. So the that point, doesn't pass the smell test either, yeah, but, does but it? But the point is that the Standards Committee now has lay members on it. We have changed in this Parliament... Good thing, too, because it wouldn't be quarate otherwise, well, would it? Because the MPs don't turn well, up. Well, they should be there, and that's absolutely clear, and I make no bones about that, and they know that, Well, they've that not too. been doing it. Yeah, OK, but that's their responsibility in the committee well, to do this I, thing. It's slightly and your to see their responsibility too, through. Well, actually, no, not directly. You're, you're, the, but, you're the leader yes, of the absolutely. House. Absolutely, of course I am. And they MPs have, don't give enough of a monkeys to turn put, up to the committee we which have regulates put, their behaviour. We have put lay members on that committee and the members of that standards committee are responsible well, for delivering on their responsibilities. And they have done. They've delivered a report and they've delivered a whole series of reports on but, their responsibilities. But I, you see, you're, you're ignoring... Vote? No, and nor do they need to vote. <laughs> what are they because, doing on the committee then? Well, because they participate directly in all the decisions of the committee. And if they dissented... <laughs> They could publish a dissenting opinion, and frankly, that would effectively act as sure. a veto on the rest uh, well, of the committee. They, they, they have more power an opinion than now having saying a vote. that MPs are too busy no. to be concerned about standards. No, that's not true. They, they do they, say no, that. They, no, I've read it, and actually, so they, they recognise that MPs members are, very are busy. too busy to spend much time on standards. Well, actually, they they know, and I know, and we've discussed with the lay members. No. The responsibility is 
on the Standards Committee and other members to meet those standards. And that's our job, and we will do but that. But if they're thing. not even turning up... But let me, let me be clear about a number of things. Firstly, the expenses system, because it wasn't covered in your package, the expenses system We've been since May 2010 is administered by an independent authority, IPSA. Right. And that is completely separate. So now and for the future, the expenses of members of parliament is governed independently, regulated, enforced, um, overpayments can be reclaimed, fines can be levied. So that is all completely independent. We are dealing now with issues relating to the past. Uh, before 2009 when that legislation came in and I hope there are very few such cases but, but the responsibility of the Standards Committee now it has changed we have got independent members uh, we have an independent commissioner for vote. standards we have a process by which those independent members can make sure that where standards those where standards of conduct may not have been met right. it is independently investigated and there is an independent voice you, in the right. final report you've read this report from the lay members of the standards yes, committee yes yes and you'll recall in it that they also say that there should be a rethink of the standards expected of mps yeah, well they say will there be such a thing well i hope we will do that and the standards committee will themselves work with across the house and beyond in order with the public i hope uh, and they will look at rewriting the code of conduct what that's what they want to do they want right. to bring it what they regard okay, as what would you into a in more it? modern format and in line directly with the principles what of public life as set out in the what should be changed well the code of conduct i think should be simpler it should be more straightforwardly related directly to the code of conduct in public life are set out by the standards of public life Are you saying there are members of this government who can't understand it? No, I don't say that, but it has grown up over the years as a complicated structure. Because if you look actually at this particular case, the point was that, you know, you're looking at a report where Maria there has, Miller apparently the couldn't rules understand it. were very complicated. Oh it doesn't dear. help to make the rules very complicated, does this it? You want the rules to be simple. This woman is a cabinet member. Well, yes. And she can't understand the rules? Well, the, the Commissioner of Standards and the Standards Committee themselves differed about the interpretation of what, the rules. All right. What do you think this is doing to public trust in politicians? Well, I don't think it helps. But I do think, yeah, it's all right to laugh, but actually, no, because give, it's a, give credit where credit is due. Help. In this Parliament, we, we have now, since May 2010, for an independent system for the regulation of MPs' expenses, including enforcement and compliance with that. We have lay members on the Standards Committee and frankly no report from the Standards Committee uh, would really pass muster if it didn't have the agreement of the lay members so they have effectively a veto on that. We have an independent commissioner for standards. So actually from the public's point of view they should have more confidence and the issues I think but, will become much more straightforward as time said goes on. It, this isn't helping at all is it? No of course it isn't helping because Betty it's a Boothroyd legacy case the from a system from a discredited from system. To but, resign we know, her post. but Jeremy we knew it's a discredited system system before 2009. Why isn't we the knew that the system was so complex, so difficult, didn't meet any of the standards that we currently expect, uh, but this is an investigation that went what? back into 2006, 2007 and those years before the new system. Is she going to resign? I don't think so. I hope not. Because she enjoys the full confidence of the government, does well, she? From my point of view, you know, I, I think she's a good culture secretary. I mean, just think, in the last yeah. few weeks, you know, we've actually had, for example, uh, just the other day, the first same-sex marriages. She was the minister in the government responsible for seeing through one of, one of an important piece of social legislation. So she enjoys the full confidence of the government? Well, the prime minister is responsible always responsible for determining who is in yeah. the government at any one time. So it is the Prime Minister's um, uh, prerogative to decide whether a minister has his confidence at any time. Uh, and as far as you're aware, does she it, enjoy uh, his confidence? Yes, absolutely, because you know, the Prime Minister, like all of us, will have had an opportunity to look. Until she gets as, to as be I too much of a liability, he, I suppose. No, he would have had, had an opportunity to look at that report and to say, for example, as I looked at it, and said, well, actually, it doesn't disclose dishonesty. Uh, she may not have cooperated with the committee mm. as she should have done. She's apologised yeah. for that. But it doesn't disclose any dishonesty on her, her expenses. I'm sorry? How long do you give her? How long do you think she'll still be culture secretary? Well, I don't, I don't think I'm in a position. I think that's an unreasonable question to ask. Fair enough. Andrew Lansley, thank you.